Well, welcome back to my shop. I've decided for my next project, I need a tool cabinet. I've started collecting some uh, really nice hand tools. I've got a good collection of Lee Nielsen going here. I've got my uh, vintage number five Stanley. I've got a rabbit plane, draw knife. Um, plus I've got a few more hand tools. As you can see back here on my board, I've got it pretty well organized. It's not too bad. But what I want to do is make a cabinet that comes up here hangs up here, two doors open outwards, have my hand tools in there. Uh, in the main body of the cabinet I want to put my bigger tools like hand planes and in the doors I'm going to put my chisels, uh, a few things like that, uh, some saws and uh, I, I want to get my tools out of these boxes and put them in a cabinet where they'll be protected against the dust and the elements but I really need to start doing that so that's going to be my next project. So. Let's get started on that. Well, what I've done is I've laid out some of my hand tools on my workbench, sort of simulating how the cabinet's going to look. And I just I drew up, this is not the scale, but I just drew a basic deal here with the interiors and the two doors opened up. And the interior will have 41 inches from here to here. And the entire thing will be 24 inches tall. Uh, the doors will have also 20 inches in, inside each, each each of the panels will have 20, 20 inches. I've just put one extra section here for a door. Uh, I've decided that it will have to be six inches deep and the door is going to be two inches deep. Now that's not included how thick the wood's going to be. That's just the interior dimensions. Now when I get the wood then I'll adjust for that. But uh, I think this, this is going to do me here. It's going to fit in my section up here quite well. I will also have to come back here when I take all this down, pull the pegboard off and reinforce behind it so I can hang a French cleat. Uh, just hanging it on that pegboard is not going to cut it for all this and the cabinet too. So what I will do is put some reinforcement boards behind it into the concrete and then put the pegboard back on top of it. Uh, let me show you a few of my tools here so far. Well, starting from my right to left, I've got my Lee Nielsen number no. seven joiner plane, and then next to it is my vintage Stanley number no. five jack plane. Next to that is my uh, homemade plane I made from uh, um, purple heartwood with a hawk blade in it. I really like that thing. Next is my pride and joy, my uh, number no. four and a half smoothing plane from Lee Nielsen, and then over here I have a. Uh, uh, the rabbit block plane from Lee Nelson. Uh, above it here I have uh, the Lee Nelson router plane and the Lee Nelson flat spoke shave. I've left enough room because I also want to get the curved spoke shave one day. I've picked up a Miller's Falls uh, rabbit plane here too as well. And it'll give me a room for the other spoke shave and maybe another plane over here someday but a little room to grow, not, not much on that side. All right, let's scoot over to the next side. All right, at the top here, we have a Miller's Falls egg beater drill. And at the top, we have my Spofford uh, brace with a the fray chuck there. I've got a, a hammer here. I've got my draw knife and um, scorp. I, I just threw in my uh, honing guide here just because I, I kind of wanted to and I also have a box of Irwin auger bits which I'm quite proud of. Let's open that up. Pick those up on eBay real cheap. Never been used. Except for me a couple of times. Gives me a little extra room here too for a little growth and now I just made enough room here for one door panel and I, I've got a few of my chisels laid out here I want to pick up about three or four more chisels. Uh, there's one more saw I want to get. I have the Lee Nelson carcass saw and a gent saw here, but I do want to get the Lee Nelson uh, dovetail saw. Uh, I've got several squares here. A really old antique one that belonged to a relative of mine. A smaller, uh, the tri-squares and a smaller tri-square. Got my marking gauge, dividers that belong to an old family member. Um, my bevel gauge, I've got my two foot folding rule. I just threw a uh, tape measure in there. I've got a marking knife uh, and my combination square. 
uh, and that's just one door for now and the other one but I will have saws and chisels and they give me room for a little growth too a few other tools I want to pick up may, may attach some of this stuff with some of those magnetic strips but don't know yet but as you can see I've got my basic uh, sketch here uh, I'll probably use SketchUp to draw a better version of this I've been looking at uh, Mark Spagnolo's wall hanging cabinet uh, after reading the Anarchist tool chest, I would love to build a tool chest. I really don't have the floor space for it. I may do that one day later, but for now, I want a wall hanging ca uh, tool cabinet. And I need to get some of these tools out of the cardboard boxes and uh, hang them in there so, so it'll look good. So, next step will be go to the uh, lumber yard, pick up some wood. See you then. Well, I just came back from uh, Sweetwater Lumber in Austell, Georgia just a couple of miles around the corner from me and I picked up three boards a red oak 10 foot long four quarter um, I have two it's eight inches wide and one seven inch wide and as you can see here I have put some chalk and I have roughly marked out uh, for the uh, pieces that I'm going to need and I will be cutting them oversized and then cutting them down a little bit later once I get them cut down to a manageable size, then I'm going to run them through the planer, uh, knock them down a little bit, and uh, and then I will trim them to the final lengths, and then run them to the table saw and cut them to the final widths. That's, that's my goal here for the next little bit.
for my top and bottom, I have taped the boards together and flushed up one end, and then I have marked 42 and a quarter. That will be my total length for the top and bottom. I squared up the uh, the two sides which I've taped together. I've got one end square and I'm marking them off at 25 and a half. That'll be the total length of the sides. This is, will be my center partition, and I'm also cutting it at 25 and a half. It will be cut a little bit shorter later on, but for now I'm going to keep it at 25 and a half. Well, I've got all my uh, pieces cut. Uh, got my tops and my sides ripped down to in the center partition, ripped to seven and a half inches wide. The links are are at the right lengths. The door pieces, I will be ripping these about two and a half inches wide, getting two out of each of these. Uh, I'm not going to uh, do any cutting on those until I'm ready to make the doors. Uh, the center partition will have to be cut down just a little bit more on the length. When I, when I install that, but I will wait until then. Uh, I think that's enough for today. It's storming pretty good outside. Time to get out of the shop. Uh, next time, I will get my dovetail jig, and I'm going to dovetail these corners, all four corners, with my dovetail jig. So, uh, see you next time. Working on the uh, uh, wall hanging tool chest. I've already got my red oak cut and milled down to the proper thickness and size. Uh, I've got my Rockler dovetail jig set up. Bought this a while back and I really like it. Uh, made a 
will stand for, which is basically a box, I've got two dowels that fit into the dog holes on my bench, so it sits in there real good. Uh, I've already got it set up, and for the I'm doing through dovetails, and for that on the upper part, you've got to have a uh, a spacer that's uh, a quarter inch thicker than your actual board. So I've got that set up. Uh, this thing also has a uh, dust collection on it that works really well. Uh, I've got my side set here and I'm ready to go. The only problem I do have with this particular jig, a lot of people complain about it, but the only, I really like it, uh, the dust collection. You have your uh, gauge to sit in here to where you set your board so you get your uh, pins just right. You've got to unscrew these very long bolts to get that set just right. So if you want to use the dust collection, that's in the way. There's no way to get to that without just taking it completely off and that's kind of a pain. I've got my uh, Triton plunge router set with the proper depth. I've got my dovetail bit in there. Um, and basically what I did, you take one of your other boards, you stick it under here, uh, draw your line on your board that you're using, then set your router up here and set your depth to that line you just drew. So, I'm ready to make my first uh, dovetails here. Well, that went real well. Uh, you saw me pull the vacuum out. Most of it all sucks down, but there's a little bit left in, in the dovetails themselves. So all I got to do now is uh, I, I had marked all my boards the inside. And you want, for doing the tails here, you want the inside facing you. Just open it up. And you can see those tails there turn out quite nicely. So all I gotta do is rotate it, make sure the inside still faces me. Put it in there flush up against the jig and flush against my guide there. Lock it. And we're ready to do the other side.
And quite simply, we have one of our sides done. And we'll do the other one, then we'll get started on the uh, on the pin. Okay, the sides are done with the uh, the tails cut in. Now I'm fixing to do the pins. Uh, I'm going to do that on the top and bottom pieces. I've already got one in here. Do the same thing. Drop it in. Put your board in there. Make your mark and set your bit. Now I've taken the dovetail bit out and put a, a straight bit in. And I've already got it set to that depth. Uh, Still so use your shims here. I did change out my uh, my tail template and put the pin template in and I've got it set to the right gauge according to the instruction manual and, uh, and so far so good Okay, and my first set of pins done. As you can see there, turned out pretty good. And I will rotate the board like I did before. And one other difference is, I had all my boards marked for the inside of the cabinet. And for the tails, you want that inside pointing towards you Whereas now, with the pins, you want them facing away from you. So all I gotta do is flip it, lock it, it's all lined up. So let's do another one. Well, I've got my dovetails cut. Uh, when I cut my first, uh, actually when I cut the bottom here, I went and did a test fit, and it was a little bit too tight. And the instructions say, take your template, move it up about a sixteenth of an inch, or on the scale there. I did that and re-trimmed re it, fit like a champ. Then, then I did the top, and, uh, and it fit. So I've got these three sides together. Let's put this one together for a test fit. And there we go. And pretty squared. I hadn't even tried to flex it or anything yet. Um, uh, I'm pleased. Now what I want to do next, while I got my router out, I'm going to cut a dado in the center of the top and bottom to hold the center partition. And it'll just slide in a dado. And then I'll get the router table out and I'm going to, on the bottom, I'm going to put a, a three quarter inch dado all the way around to hold the back. So once I get all that ready, then we can put it together. Okay, now let's cut the dado in the center of the top and bottom to hold the center partition. I've got my uh, half inch bit and my router here. It's the, the board is about right under three quarters, so my three quarter bit is going to be too big. Um, so I'm going to use a half, then I will trim the uh, center board down later to fit. And I've just got the top and bottom boards clamped together. I'm going to start and stop an inch in. 
Uh, I've got another board just laid across here as a guide and put my square on, make sure it's good and square and it should be ready to go. So let's cut this date out. nice. Now, clamp them together and even in the ends. I know that groove is dead center on both boards. Now I want to put the uh, dado in the back to hold the back piece. Let's get started on that. Well now I'm ready to cut the dados on the uh, insides of the cabinet to hold the, the back board. Uh, I've got all, all of them marked. I just took my chalk and put a line where, where I want it so I feed it in there. Right, Got all my corners uh, fitting well and I don't want to mess up now. What I'll do is drop it on top of the bit right on the edge of these uh, dovetails and then when I pass it through I'll lift it off when I get to this end. There we go. Well, I was just about ready to start to put this together here. I've got all my dados cut from my backboard. Got my uh, center petition here cut. I've cut notches in so it'll fit right in this dado right here. And I'm happy with everything so far. And I said, okay, let me cut my piece of plywood for the back. And I had picked up a three quarter inch, two foot by four foot sheet at Home Depot, thinking that was gonna do it. Well my inside dimensions are 24 inches and then I have went a quarter inch either way with my dados so when I start to measure it I realize I'm a half inch shy <laughs> so I'm gonna have to go back to Home Depot and pick up a, a larger sheet and cut from that just for a half inch I actually thought about taking these sides and knocking them down a half inch and redoing my my uh, dovetails but I'm like no they fit fine I am not doing that uh, a half inch smaller in the cabinet would have been fine, but I, I just didn't allow for these uh, uh, dados when I, when I bought my uh, wood there. So, got to think of those things ahead of time. Nothing's messed up, it's just got to go spend some more money now and don't like doing that. So, uh, I need to go pick that up. And what I'm going to do though is do some sanding on the inside. All the insides I'll sand up to 220. I'm not even going to touch the outsides yet because after the glue up I'll have to come back on each of the uh, corners take a block plane and shave those dovetails down a little bit and then uh, I can sand the outside. So I'll get started with that. <laughs> 